Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com with another sort of quick computer science theory lesson on another data structure, also known as a hash list. A hash list. So what's the idea with a hash list? Now this is gonna be more useful when you're talking about like huge amounts of information. So you're talking about millions and millions of records. Okay, now what's gonna happen here is that let's pretend that I have five spots, um, you know, I have five tickets to the rodeo, okay? But they're to different, well, not the rodeo, uh, let's do whatever event. There, there were five different events though, so I don't know who's gonna get which ticket to which event. Okay, and I have Jordan, Steve, Stacy, Joe, and Ed. And I want to figure out which one of these that they're going to get. So what I do is I will pass them to what's called a hash function. And the hash function is going to do some sort of mathematical equation on their name. It could be anything under certain rules that basically it always gives you the same result with the same input um, that the likeliness of you getting any one of these five spots tends to be kind of even but whatever that ha hash function is we put their name in there so we'll put Jordan into the hash function and we'll say that it generates spot number one okay so he gets spot number one Jordan is here and that's basically what a hash list is doing it's basically saying we're gonna put you to this function and figure out where you are in these spots okay so then you know we put through Steve and then maybe Steve gets actually we'll put Steve in five so five will be Steve um, and so forth and so forth but what happens if that based on the way that the hash function works Stacy gets put in and then she also gets assigned to number one but Jordan already got ticket number one this is what's referred to as a collision okay and it depends what the situation is. Now in this situation, where there's only five tickets, so basically at the end of the day, we don't, we're only matching five people with five tickets, I might decide to do what's called probing. So in that case, what I'll do is since Jordan's already gotten the spot, we'll just take Stacy and probe and just keep going down until we find an empty slot. Okay, so then Stacy will end up in slot number two and get this ticket over here. Okay, that's probing. Now with a large amount of data, and and if like the spot the number of spots and the number of people don't match up so if there's a mismatch between the number of spots and the number of people you may have um probing may end up filling all the spots and then having any spots left so in that case you may want to take a different approach you might want to do what's called chaining so in, in that case what we would do so let's say we have bob over here we're gonna add bob to the list so there's five spots but six people okay so then what happens is in that case, if Stacy also got assigned to number spot one with Jordan, instead of just probing to an empty spot, we would actually create a linked list linking a new memory spot over here. So essentially we would kind of create a new ticket using the ticket analogy. So Stacy and Jordan would both be under sort of cubbyhole one, except we created a new spot for Stacy and we would just keep linking lists for everybody who ends up getting attached to one. Now, of course, the downside is you, there is a possibility that we might assign multiple people to one, multiple people to two, maybe no one to three. So you might have an empty spot and um, that's a possibility, okay? But again, it makes sure that you can always add more data. You don't have to worry about having a limited number of spots. Um, but if you know exactly how much data you have, probing might be a better way to do it. So you have probing and you have chaining as far as how you deal with collisions when you're populating a hash list. Now you could just decide not to hash at all and do what's called a direct access table where you just say, okay, I'm just gonna put everyone in a table. The problem is if you're talking about millions of records, how, how do you go, That that's gonna take up a lot of memory because you're keeping each record completely separately. You're not kind of using any kind of way to sort of condense the data, make the data more quickly, quicker to access. Um, so that's not necessarily the best way to ever do it. Okay, but that's how a hash list works. Again, you have a hashing function. So you have 
inputs, keys, that go into a hashing function that puts out an integer that labels your spot on the list, and then uh, collisions are either handled through probing or chaining. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day and enjoy.